It's a situation, it's not like driving in the fog. If you're driving in the fog, everybody slows down, but you can't stop. And you'd love to be able to see 50 feet ahead, but you can't see. So you see maybe 20 feet ahead. And that's kind of dangerous to drive when you can only see the next 20 feet. But if you don't drive a little bit, you will never see the next 20 feet. Some of it is the emotional fear, the silent barriers. Some of it is I can't pay my rent next month if I leave my job. So I can't leave my job. I will stay in my job. It was truly a leap of faith for me to make this decision and start this company because there was so much on the line. Like There were so many things that could have gone wrong. It started off really tough. In tech, it's very white male dominated. There's been harassment and different things that have happened over time. But I cannot let that stop me. I can't let that ruin things because so many people are depending on me. There were nights I went to sleep so afraid of not even knowing what the next step should be. There were mornings I would walk past my computer completely paralyzed by fear because I had no idea where to go next. Entrepreneurs bring their entire selves to every single thing they do on a daily basis. Entrepreneurs die deaths of a million cuts. They don't die from one blow of a hammer. All those little things they deal with day to day that get in the way of making a great business. And oftentimes they're psychological barriers, they're cultural barriers, or they're regulatory barriers. Sometimes it's like being in a maze. They're trying to find an answer, they're trying to find a solution. Everyone's told them they've got a great idea. At some point, they either run out of energy and give up, or they get lucky and succeed. I got rejected repeatedly for a year and a half. And at that point, I'm really wondering if I am crazy. Like, I feel like I'm crazy. We'd made some major missteps. Distribution deals evaporated overnight. So we were suddenly in this situation where we had an extreme capital outlay, had a lot of overhead, and lost half our revenue. It's a different kind of stress, I guess, too, because when you have a startup and you're growing a business, I mean, you know, everything you have is on the line. Every banker we had, every accountant we had, every lawyer we had advised our family, shut it down. It's not going to work. And we just didn't take no for an answer. This is a family institution, and it will go on. Real entrepreneurship, the vast majority of businesses, are just people doing day-to-day -day stuff, putting one foot in front of the other, just trying to make things work. There are people doing amazing things in their communities. Part of the role of people that support entrepreneurs is to recognize that heroism. In a great ecosystem, people help each other. They say, you know what, I know someone that can help you open that door. That ability to get information fast and support one another through that mutual network is really what allows people to overcome barriers. We see too much disconnection, we see too many blind spots, we see uh, too much segregation, frankly, and just not enough effectiveness in the ecosystem. In our ecosystem, what specifically was missing was that opportunity for inclusivity and idea and industry agnostic approaches to supporting people who want to launch and grow something, who want to take an idea and manifest that idea. In our ecosystem, there are lots of silos. Part of why it hasn't happened is because the parties haven't found each other. We're looking at ways to do that and remove the systemic barriers that could be in place that stand in the way of those people starting the businesses and finding the resources that they need. So we need to create better pathways to succeed. Everyone plays a role in the success of an entrepreneur. Even if you're not an entrepreneur, I think that you understand the richness and the value of entrepreneurship in your community. If innovation and entrepreneurship thrive from ways of thinking and ways of being, then there's really no inherent reason why you can't replicate that everywhere. It really starts to change the game when you think of it less as a method attached to one particular type of place, to a method that any individual can act upon. That actually starts to change the way that individuals relate to their communities and also changes communities so people feel empowered. We have to continue to listen, and the way we listen is through convening and reconvening to learn what's changing in the hero's journey. What's the new barrier in the way? Welcome, Victor Wong. I sincerely believe that the people here in this room today have the ability to change the trajectory of human history. Nelson Mandela said something I'll never forget, which is, it always seems impossible until it happens.
East Ship Summit was really built around the idea of could we find people from across the country of different backgrounds and industries and races and genders and communities and bring them together to talk about what they're doing. And what I think was achieved at the East Ship Summit was the affirmation that happened amongst those people that the work that they're doing isn't some one-off thing and that it is actually a changing economy in the U.S. that's emerging a new role, a new position, this new idea of a person whose entire job is to focus on the system. Ideally, in 2025, you would be able to get a degree in becoming uh, an ecosystem facilitator. It would become a profession, and they would be embedded into every business, much like a lawyer or an accountant. The best way to empower the makers, doers, and the dreamers is by giving them the environments in which to thrive, which depend entirely on the people that surround them. We wanted to legitimize the profession of ecosystem building and co-create tools that you can start enacting in your communities right away. It's also about equality. It's about having an equal seat at the front table to make decisions about your business and about your efforts. We oftentimes fail to realize that everyone has the opportunity to contribute, provided they've actually been given the chance to participate. It represents all of you, regardless of demographic, regardless of geography, it's all of us. Everybody in this room are folks that are kind of carving that new path, right? All of those resources and other folks that are kind of putting time, effort, and energy into helping us along as ecosystem builders is huge. And I think that over time, we're gonna see the results of that. I think one of the great aspects of America is this deep resilience and the sense that, well, you know, we can work it out. We can work with our, uh, our friends, our colleagues, and our, our community members to find solutions to problems. These types of shared stories, peer learning experiences, groups and communities where people can feel bonded to each other to get through those hard times, that's so important to the entrepreneurial spirit.